Okay, Mr. Denregu. Yes. Now, we're talking about the sky is the limit. But you say Absolutely. our leaders go out there and they talk a big, big. But uh, it, we don't see there. it back home. It's up there. You can read it. it, it it's online. You can read, you can read the speech and everything. Can we swing that thing and put it this way? How literate are these leaders who talk big out there? That's, that's where I'm going. You know, I found out, just like they have said, okay, if you have parents who, who applied time, funds, resources, in training the children from as little as that, and that's where ed education starts from, from the home. And literacy applies from the home. Because literacy is just basic. I mean, without literacy, there's no education. That's just basic, basic, basic can give anybody how to read and write, how to do the simple mathematics, arithmetics actually, you know, how to spell your name. Some of these people who went to uh, public school in those days when the government was serious, when it was not selfishness, when it was not personal, when it was about the community, about the people, people who were in the government, they benefited from all this. But they now occupied the civil service, which is the bane of rolling out all these policies. Now, a lot of them probably come from extremely poverty environment, with shallow stomach, and they need to fill those stomachs first. <laughs> so instead of actually applying what UNESCO and all this, there's so many papers in Nigeria needs, uh, needs all sort of acronyms. And they, they all collect money to fund these projects and programs. Right. But immediately they collect the money. They forget about the children. They forget about the girl, girl child education. They forget about the male child education. They start thinking about self. And each time, I remember, I, I, I can't remember what year, because I was in England, but I remember someone once said to me that a bachelor, when there was a, a, a strike in the university and said they should shut the universities, I mean, he didn't go to any university, you know, and, and he's head of state. I don't know the fact of that, but I heard that if that was a rumor, I mean, that, for, that was scary for me. So when you have leaders who don't even believe in what, what they're meant to be doing, and all they believe in is just making themselves rich, it all boils down to the same corruption. And thank God we have a government that, even if we're not feeling it yet, it's saying something that we haven't had. Mm. Corruption must go. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Talk about corruption must go. Ito, let me read out some things which I think, since you're an early year professional, let's see if we can go from there. Literacy, how literate or how educated is Nigeria or Nigerians? Foundational literacies, how students apply core skills to everyday tasks like one, literacy, numeracy, scientific literacy, ICT literacy, financial literacy, cultural and civic literacy. He talked about parents who gave time and resources to those early years. These competences, or these competences, or these tools that were applied to competences like critical thinking, how can we apply all of this? Is it too late to do that? How can we apply? And when you say we, we're talking about the adults. Now, um, I'm talking about the Nigeria generally. Yes, and um, I think the responsibility is actually the adults. You know, there's a saying that it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. So it's really not about the parents. Let's not even go there, you know, because the current economic reality requires that um, you, you need two sources of income to, you know, um, successfully run a home. So you find the mothers out there you know, in paid employment. Even those who are entrepreneurs, you know, run long hours. So you find that the children are either in school or left at home, especially the younger ones, with um, Help. the nannies. Hmm. Now, what kind of influences? Now, I, I, I run a, a child, um, an early um, childhood setting, and so I have had parents come to me um, bringing children primarily because they want to completely cut off the um, nanny influences, especially on language. Now, um, I find out that um, the crux of what I do is outsource parenting. So because the parents are working long hours, much more than teaching the children um, ABC, 
Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's about teaching social competence and social skills. Mm -hmm. You know, how to interact with one another and how to be sensitive to each other's feelings, great and courtesy. Um, and so we, we have resources. Mor morals, values. Absolutely. Values, yes. morals, you know. Yes. And um, we have resources, very simple resources. You know, um, we also do not have the culture of reading. So most times we open up toys and we fling the packs. Now, if you pick up a pack of toy, a, a, a toy, maybe a rattle, for example. Now, a rattle, just that simple looking toy, um, t helps the child with sensory stimulation, for example. Helps the child, develops the child's um, fine motor skills, which would help that child write better. Now, you know, because we do not know the function... A rattle of, has that effect. Absolutely. Because you're grabbing the rattle, you're picking up. So you find out that you're teaching kids, you know, pincer grip, for example. Now, they need... That's a pre-writing skill. So you, you pick up... Um, you find out that a child is, um, has a dagger hold, is holding a pencil this way. Of course, cannot write properly with that. Mm -hmm. So you begin to teach... You pick, um, get a tray of beans and say, pick the beans. Now, a child with that mundane, seemingly mundane activity, is learning to put these two fingers that is needed to pick up a pencil and begin to form letters. So it's a whole lot. Now a child comes in in the morning and you say, hello, good morning, say good morning, Mrs. Ugoji, and he says good morning, and I call, hello, Ayo, and he says, hmm? And I say, no, say yes, please. The next day, this child comes in and says, good morning, Mrs. Ugoji, and you say, hello, are you? And he says, yes, please. Learning has started. Mm. Yes, indeed. So can an, adult, can an adult who missed out on this kind of training mm. impart that kind of knowledge no. to the younger ones? <laughs> that, that, that's that's a, a trillion dollar question. If you ask the me. question is, can you give what you don't have? Absolutely, <laughs> that's the and, meaning and, and, of that question. But it becomes more difficult now. Do, does it mean it becomes more difficult because what you're trying to do is um, it's like um, relearning a child who's probably um, had, has a speech defect, you know, and um, that. Um, um, that deficiency is found out maybe much later after three because I've had a child in my setting who um, had a tongue tie. Mm. Of course, the mom didn't know, mm. and we realized that and you know um, made a report. Now this child was over to and had to start relearning speech. Guess what? It wasn't just about speaking; it was also about self-confidence because he he had started being taunted, so he began to feel it's. A whole lot. You cannot even Withdrawal. begin to imagine, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and, and, and then um, you find out that um, these are children. Now, age zero to five is when you have the most rapid development of the brain cells. Mm -hmm. So it, 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 it's, it, it's not rocket science that that's where the foundation really is. And so when you miss out on that, so you, 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 you begin to have, um, create environments, stimulating learning environments. You toss books, you do not have to put, it's not rock learning. You do not have to, you know, um, ask a child to sit down here and read a book. He easily picks up a book because he sees you picking up a book. He flips through the book and, he you know, picture you reading because he sees you flipping through. And you say, you know, to the child, now um, um, it's time for reading, you know, go pick up a book. And you begin to see the kind of books that he tends towards. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I have a, um, a nine-year-old, and the teacher says to me, um, he loves to read nonfiction. And I said, I, 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 I noticed that. Why? Because he likes um, the wildlife, so he listens to National Geographic. How many parents have noticed where their children tend towards. Yeah. You don't have to be a medical doctor mm. to be a success story. Mm -hmm. You do not have to be an engineer to mm. be a success story. We've seen, I mean, the success stories abound. And then, you know, what he said was so critical. What kind of role models are we putting before those children? Mm. So you bring, um, bring on someone to give, um, um, what, a valedictory speech or um, a, um, some speech on career day and with all due respect to singing competitions. You know, whatever happened, I remember in those days we used to have, what, science quiz, quizzes, whatever happened to those? Mm. 